No evidence of voter fraud is the cry we've been hearing continuously from the left for the past month, despite there being substantial evidence, just evidence they've chosen to ignore. Hundreds of sworn affidavits, alleging irregularities and countless statistical abnormalities are evidence whether you like it or not. But this latest development may just be too overt to be casually swept under the rug by the mainstream media, like all of the other things have been so far. Now, this is political, and we'll still continue on with our election 2020 series. We've just reached 100 videos yesterday in the series, which is quite an achievement, I think, and in such a short time. Um, and as always, if you, do, if you do enjoy the content, please do consider giving us a subscribe, like, share the video, and let us know what you think down below. I think this video in particular is a very important one to share um, because of, well you'll be shocked i think when you see it for yourself so um yesterday giuliani was doing a um hearing as he has been doing all over the country in the states the states that he alleges that, the, that there is fraud that has taken place and in that hearing they presented this video footage that they've managed to get their hands hold of um and so the lawyer there who was at the hearing said well they said that they presented surveillance footage at a Georgia state legislature hearing that appears to show ballot counting workers telling poll observers late at night on election day to leave before continuing to count and pulling out what appears to be boxes filled with ballots. A lawyer is volunteering with the campaign's legal case said the team received video footage from State Farm Arena's Vote Tabulation Center in Fulton County, Georgia. The team said that the GOP poll watchers weren't allowed to watch the counting process in the poll center. According to Pick, an unusual occurrence took place later in the evening at around 10 p.m. local time. A woman described as a blonde woman with braids told workers to stop counting and notified everyone to go home. Describing the video footage, Pick said, Everyone clears out, including the Republican observers and the press, but four people stay behind and continue counting and tabulating well into the night. The four counted unobserved until about 1 a.m., according to the video. Pick said that the video footage even shows Fulton County election workers waiting at the scanning areas until GOP poll observers and reporters left the room before they started scanning ballots, ostensibly without any observation. So I want to show you just very quickly, uh, obviously all the links will be in the description. So go check out this video in its entirety, it's 12 minutes long. But I want to kind of just show you exactly what's going on. So you can see here in the camera footage, all of the poll workers are counting as you would expect and, um, you know, going through the envelopes and doing all the various checks that they do. And then at the back in the top right here, you can see there's the tabulation machines that they have. And in the bottom right, you can see the press set up with cameras and they're recording everything that's going on. And at some point in time, everyone just starts packing up and leaves. And you can see... The press is still there in the bottom right, and then they go. And then once you've basically got hardly anyone there, later on, they start pulling out these ballot boxes from underneath the table. They describe them as suitcases. I think they're just like boxes with your wheels on or whatever you want to call them. Um, and you can see they take them over to the voting tabulation machines. Once everyone's gone, the observers are gone. These are just the counters, and they start taking these ballots and putting putting them through the voting machine with with no observation whatsoever so kind of what do you think of this one is this like is this a smoking gun i mean it is isn't it because it's completely unprecedented i mean how can anybody now say that this is a fair election because actually nobody knows for sure because there's no oversight anymore there's no accountability all of the legitimacy for any election ever comes from the system of checks and observations and supervisions that go on so we count votes and ballots by hand but supervision of those uh, voters removes the human element okay but the human element the human potential for wrongdoing and a human potential for to badness has is still here in georgia so i mean it could it could very well be innocent but then why weren't the votes counted with the press and the observers present so this is just too fishy for me and this is way too fishy and if anyone still has doubts about the uh, validity of the election in their head right now 
I'll keep them there because this is really a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we come across multiple things. Obviously, every day we're just sort of reading generally and going through things and looking for stories and seeing what's going on. Um, and I come across like multiple instances where someone says, oh, the smoking gun, voter fraud and all this. And, and I read a bit into it and it's like, nah, no, not really. It can be quite easily debunked or whatever. He had like this video by some guy called uh, Dr. Sheba who was doing his like statistical analysis but i mean i, I watched the whole video it's in entirety like an hour long and it, it didn't make any sense so we choose we choose not to talk about those things because we don't actually think that they they are worth um you know presenting and talking about so this is one of those where you know the, the officials have come out and they've put forward their explanation for it so it's right that we give you their explanation and you can decide for yourself whether or not that makes sense so gabriel sterling the head of Georgia's voting system implementation manager told a fact-checking website after the footage was released that if you look at the videotape, your work you see here is the work you would expect, which is you take the sealed suitcase looking things in, you place the ballots on the scanner and manageable ballots and you scan them. There wasn't a bin that had ballots in it under the table. It was an empty bin and the ballots from it were actually put out were actually out on the table when the media was still there and then it was placed back into the box when the media was still there and placed next to the table. Um, even had state monitors <clears throat> been present, the law still requires that ballot counting be open to pass our monitors into the public, but state monitors were not present. Oh, that's what the um, Secretary of State says. Um, so for me, I, I don't know if this is really a logical explanation. I mean, one, there obviously were suitcases under the table. They basically say that no one told them to leave and that uh, when the press and all of the Republican observers left, they just left because they decided to leave. But it doesn't really add up to me that they would just all decide to leave at the same time, right? No, and and we were there on election night, right? Well, I mean, obviously we weren't there, but <laughs> we were covering the election night. And yeah. let's face it, it wasn't there was no exciting point where everyone has to rush off to to hear the president elect because yeah. we still haven't heard from a president elect, have we? So um, it's you know, for for them to tell turn around and to tell us that um, all of the ob uh, observers, all of the press, spontaneously decided in the spur of the moment, many different individuals from many different organisations to go and leave at the same time, just you know, by some you know act of God, some force majeure, <laughs> that stretches the the um, the length of my willingness to believe someone. Uh, okay, um, but and you know these are uh, observers. The press is there to observe, but the observers are definitely there to observe, aren't they? Why would they leave? Why would the press leave before every vote is counted? Because they, it's their job to report um, on the the final numbers, right? Why would the observers leave before everything's counted? Because it's their job to observe. This isn't explained, and this isn't, you know, they're, they're passing it off as some kind of everyday occurrence, but it isn't. This is a really, really bad thing. There's so many logical holes in this account. Yeah, certainly. I, it reminds me of essentially a lot of the other stuff that have been happening on, in other states is um, they remove all the ballots from the envelopes, but then when it co count, comes to putting them through the machine, then suddenly, oh, people are thrown out or, you know, they're told, oh, we'll stop counting now, but then they're counting into the minute. Like, it, it, it seems too much of a coincidence to believe that you've got reports of observers all over the country saying that they were told to leave and that they stopped counting and then the counting continued on through the night when it came to the tabulation machines. Um, but it just logically, it doesn't make any sense. Why would the observers sit there, um, you know, meticulously watching the um, counters take out all of the ballots from the envelopes and put them, you know, in their piles in the boxes? Why would they watch them do that, but then not watch the tabulation process and make sure that all of the votes that they've just watched are actually counted properly through the tabulation machine? So it doesn't make any sense logically. And uh, Georgia governor agrees because uh, Brian Kemp roused the ire of President Trump in recent days for not doing more in response to reports of election fraud in his state. But that may be changing now after Governor Kemp is calling for a signature order after CCTV footage was presented on Thursday showing elected workers purportedly unloading suitcases with hidden ballots. Casey wrote earlier about the 
video presented by the Trump campaign lawyers during an emergency hearing in Georgia on Thursday. The yeah, video allegedly shows election workers in Fulton County wheeling in suitcases full of ballots after an election worker told party watchers and those to go home after that. Okay, that's just what we talked about. That's just what we've seen. But then hours after the hearing, Governor Kemp is reportedly now calling for a signature audit to be conducted in the state. And this is a tweet from Cal Morris, who um, I believe works for, is a reporter for Breitbart. And he said, breaking Georgia Republican Governor Brian Kemp now calls for a signature audit after CCT footage was leaked of hidden ballots being secretly counted. So, you know, the governor who's, who's been... Uh, he, he's he's kind of uh, provoked a, a bit of uh, anger and frustration from a lot of Republicans, especially, especially Georgian Republicans. And if he's changing his tune about this now, I think it, it might be that he himself is looking at this and going, I, I'm not going to be a very popular character if I don't try and do something when you see all of this evidence being presented and put in front, and put in front of him and, and everyone else. I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing is, right? I don't want to say to to Brian Kent that I told you so, right? Because you know, I I think we should be kind of gracious about this. The man has seen enough evidence to change his mind now, and I think that's genuinely a good thing. We should be encouraging people in politics to, uh, when presented with evidence, to be able to change their mind, right? And he's done that, so fair play to him. Um, but the thing is, you know, he didn't have much of a choice, you know. Uh, when you're looking at the the state of the election in Georgia right now, and we have, we had that recount, obviously, and several thousand votes for Trump were found. Okay, it wasn't enough to change anything, but the fact that several thousand votes are going missing um, when the margins were so narrow and so tight surely proves that we must do uh, a full recount with the signature audits and everything just to get that, I squeeze every last drop of certainty out of it as we can. As we said, there's lots and lots of dodgy things that have gone in this election. It's unpre it's simply unprecedented, the level of uh, weird things that have happened in this election. For me, it makes perfect sense to do a forensic recount and you know, hats off to Brian Kemp for turning around and changing his mind. And it must be embarrassing for him to do, but he's done it. So well done. Yeah, like you say, it takes courage to um, to change your mind after you see the evidence and admit that you were wrong about things. Um, and I really hope that we do see the full forensic analysis because, I mean, if that happens, they go through, check every ballot, signature, everything, you know, check all the voter rolls and make sure it all adds up. It's going to be difficult for anyone to call, you know, fraud at that point in time if that's a fully transparent process. Um, and we all see for ourselves that the ballots are legit. So I hope that happens uh, just for the, the sake of future elections in America. And I hope that come the midterms and come the special election, I mean, even in January, uh, well, the runoff in January, um, that in Georgia that we actually have some faith in that election. Um, so... As always, thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing. And just as if you, in case you didn't need, in case you did need another reminder, I should say, uh, we are doing the live stream every Sunday now. And we'd love it if some people dropped by uh, just to say hello, even. Um, and obviously, if we can have a bit of back and forth and ask questions, then that would be great as well. So hopefully, uh, see you then on Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Is it Eastern time? Yeah, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so see you then if you do turn up. Uh, thanks for watching as always.